it's taxpayers' money. So there's a mass of money from the citizens uh, is being brought into universities for, for research. Um, so you could say it, it ends a, a, kind of, a kind of state monopoly in, 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 in state universities. Um, one of the other benefits is it makes research more intelligible to the public. If everyone is going round um, very, very busily uh, forming companies and telling everyone about innovation, then uh, and people are crowdfunding and things are on the internet and Facebook and social media, then the public begins to have a different understanding of a university's uh, what university research can do, uh, and so so these are the these are the very the very good things. Uh, uh, about the the the, 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 entrepren the, the entrepreneurial university, if I could, if I could call it that. Um, so just to talk about about patents and intellectual uh, property briefly, um, the the business would say that the that the, the classic model whereby you 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 have a fantastic piece of research such as Amalia's research. Amalia is going to talk to you uh, after me. Um, that, 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 that working through the current system or a typical current system, it's the fastest way to bring a product to market. So it's fast and it's efficient and you get it to market and then people feel the marvelous benefits of it. And again, just to recap, the, 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 the contra argument is that knowledge is not a private commodity and shouldn't be privatized. There actually, there wouldn't be anything to stop people like Amalia just publishing the whole of her fantastic research. And then people like me could go and make lots of money for it, promise, and then and then perhaps pay Amalia back. But in, but of course the university will advise Amalia not to behave in, in that way. They would take Amalia down the patent route uh, and the licensing route. So Amalia becomes just, uh, just, just this is the very the person who's likely to become very rich in the near future. Just point point Amalia out in the in, in the front the front row. Um, so the, uh, the, 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 so the some of the other problems with this, the, 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 the how students how students behave in, in relation. Is this okay? Yeah, how, how students behave in relation to, uh, or how they behave within within the, 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 this system. I'm not, I'm not bore you with the full details, but what one effect, for example example can often be that uh, Amalia, and, and uh, I'll not always use Amalia as an example because she, she's, she's easily embarrassed, she could, having made this wonderful discovery and, 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 and performed these, these uh, interesting experiments and significant experiments, she could proclaim this knowledge to the student body and she could, she could go on television and say what a marvellous thing this all is, she could, except she, she'd be... She, for a number of reasons, she'd be advised not to do that, but to actually maintain level of control over the knowledge that that, that, that she has. Um, in this process, acad academics who have been traditionally teaching research without any particular market orientation, just teaching pure research without a thought to its commercialization, are being diverted. I mean, maybe diverted is the wrong, but anyway, some of their time is taken up with looking after the, these. The, the, these potentially patentable discoveries and, and then thinking about their potential commercialization. Um, one of the, the, the this, the, this is, this can be all fine, but there are some examples where it really can be uh, somewhat troublesome. So in the case of a, of a clinical, uh, clinical trials of drugs, if you think that a patent in the UK will last for 20 years, currently, typically, if you're a firm bringing a, a new drug to the market and you're performing cl clinical trials, some clinical trials, as, as some of you will know better than me, uh, can last 15 years, 18 years. Some clinical trials could last three years, five years. It doesn't take a genius to work out which clinical trial uh, and which drug is going to get the venture capital money and, 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 uh, and will be sought after for, for patents, because by the time you've completed the longer clinical trials, your, your patent is gone, and that might be challengeable, the, 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 time, has, the time has passed. So that's one, one potentially quite seriously negative aspect of, 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 this, of this culture. 
and other ways, as I'll explain, of, of, of mitigating it. The Economist, I don't know if, if anyone knows the, the uh, UK magazine, international magazine, I suppose, The Economist, produced some, some time ago a very, very interesting article on the, the effects of certain uh, patents on, on clinical trials. So you need to you need to mitigate this this kind of this kind of thing. So if these are the if I present the two opposing forces of the free diffusion of knowledge against the the close protection of knowledge, it's definitely going to be more than twenty minutes. I can see. Then the the, the resolution is having um, a series of measures uh, of the impact of commercial research and partnerships with universities. Um, using a great deal of imagination and creativity in how you judge what the what the impact of this research is, what the beneficial impact. So it's no it's no good. It's just just saying, look, you know, we 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 we've supported a number of startup companies, and their their revenues are now a billion a year uh, collectively. What you really need to think about is, you know, what what good are these companies doing? I mean, and of course, a lot of them will be doing marvelous things with. with drugs, they may be doing marvellous things with information technology, they may be helping to clean people's water in, in areas where, where they have issues with such things. Um, so you, you need an imaginative way of measuring the impact and I'm not sure that in, in those measures of impact that we're, we're, we're quite as sophisticated as we, as we should be. Now in the UK, just to, to, to so having gone from the big slightly philosophical issues, ju just look at the, the UK and where the framework for for, for, uh, for for entrepreneurial activity in universities in the UK. Some of you may have heard of the Research Excellence Framework. I'm not sure if did you know it, Amalia. It's a it's a it's a framework in which uh, which essentially judges the success of universities in research. And some of this is is is, is pure research. Uh, and so will it, the, the 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 criteria would be pub, uh, uh, publications in in peer-reviewed journals such as Nature. Um, uh, one of the impacts, that, that, and this is new, that it's interesting, this is new in, in, in 2014, uh, it is, it is related to uh, entrepreneurial partnership, uh, essentially. And 20% of, uh, of the rating is based on how successful this particular university with, is, or all UK universities uh, are, in, in terms of their, of their entrepreneurial uh, activity structures and, 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 and so on. So what is the, what, what is the university's reaction to this? Or not, not just Cambridge, but what is a typical university reaction to this? They'll, they'll, they, they, I'll not go through all of them, but they'll do a number of things. They'll uh, have much enhanced collaboration with external enterprises. They'll often incentivize staff to work with uh, enterprises to bring uh, innovations to, to market and to help startups and help innovation generally. They'll expand consulting services, which of course is happening and has been happening for some time in all UK universities, to work with business, again, as a, as a source of, uh, uh, of revenue. They will establish enterprise leaders, um, so the deans of enterprise, for example, would be, would be a typical thing. Um, They'll also have a very vigorous communication program, just to come back to the issue of posters and the, the websites and social media. It's, it, it, it's quite difficult to walk through a, a university in the UK without seeing something about innovation and entrepreneurship and uh, injunctions to, to, to students that you know, set up your own business, commercial, your, commercialize your research and make, and make lots of money. Certainly in Cambridge, they're very, very good at communicating. The, the, uh, the 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 business of of research, if I could if I could put it that way, and they establish brands, enterprise brands, to make it sound exciting. It actually becomes quite cool that that you, you uh, and I think it's possibly the same in 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 Yerevan, which strikes me as being a very inventive and, and entrepreneurial place. Actually, uh, not in, un, unlike Cambridge in, 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 in its entrepreneurial spirit, they it, it's just a cool thing to set up a new business. It's fashionable. This is the, I even saw a statement, I won't tell you which university it was, but I even saw a statement on the university website, it was in the UK, which, which said, look, come along to this, and maybe more than one, come along to this uh, incubator session and, and, and we'll talk to, to, to learn about incubators. It doesn't matter if you haven't got a business idea or if you've never thought about setting up a business, just come along anyway, which I, 
I, I should have gone along actually just to see what, what sort of people turned up to that. So it's very, very interesting. It's a very, very open, welcoming um, uh, pair of arms to anybody who's remotely interested, or in fact, or not remotely interested, in, in setting up a, a, a business um, through which, which exploits their, their, their research. So the big, big, uh, big communication programs. What the other aspects are, of course, inevitably risk and governance issues. But is the governance in place to make sure that this is done properly and that, and that everything is, that the checks and balances are in place and you're making wise investments? Um, and of course, perhaps above all, to make sure the university gets a share of the profits. So it's a big IP, intellectual property exercise, always goes on around, around uh, the, 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 these areas. And the last one, and I don't mean last in, in, in the hierarchy, just simply last in my notes, is, is at the ethical consideration of, of uh, which brings us back actually to the philosophical questions, that, that what are the ethical considerations that, that the university should um, be pondering when they, when they examine the impact of their, of their research, not just profit, because that simply isn't good enough. Uh, it, it's the, the wider benefit to society, if, if I can put it in that way. Cambridge Enterprise resolves this in a very, very nice way, in a very ambitious way. If I can uh, quote from memory from their website, what they say is they come along to Cambridge Enterprise, what, which Amadio has done, and what we're interested in, they're explicit about this, is ideas, will support ideas, which in a two-year period will positively impact upon the lives of three to five million people. So just think about that. These are big ideas, but it's a very, very, it seems to me that Cambridge University, I possibly would say this because uh, I'm a college of Cambridge University, but it seems to me a, a very nice way of resolving, resolving that issue, the, the positive impact. The, the, the question, the, the, the question, I don't need to tell any of you which will emerge straight away, the question that Anna, Jacqueline's daughter, asked is, how do you, how, how do you measure positive impact? And that's where a lot of work needs to be done because some, sometimes it's obvious. I, I gave the example of a particular technology company.